It's a pleasure to be here. There's a great deal of irony this morning in my following Ron. Ron and I live 300 kilometers away from each other in the U.S., but we had to travel 8,000 miles to meet each other. And this goes to show you what a small world we have. What I want to do today is to talk to you on the subject of leadership, but looking at leadership in the context of what are called strengths, specifically Gallup's Strength Finder program. Are any of you familiar with Gallup's Strength Finder program? Oh, just a few of you. So this will be new information. That's good. Also, during the course of my presentation, there will be engagement opportunities, so you know I may throw a question out. There will be time at the end for questions, but also, if you're coming here just to hear me only as a speaker, you'll probably be disappointed, but because there's a collective amount of information in the room, that will be of great benefit to all of us. Is that fair enough? Yes. And let's get started. So my question to you, and you don't need the microphone, is can anyone tell me when you saw my topic, what you really wanted to learn? Anybody? I'm going to go to the front table. Anybody? Come on, Sharon. Hey. <laughs> Why are you picking on me? Because you're easy. Um, you okay. respond. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you my thoughts on this topic. My thoughts are that I've done some, I read recently that it's, it's better to work with people's strengths than it is to work with their improving their weaknesses. So uh, when I read your topic, I thought, well, that's going to be interesting because I think this is something that everybody's always going, oh, here's your soft spot, we need to improve it. And they're really ignoring, well, hang on, let's look at your strengths and how that can work to your advantage. So yeah, that's what I was interested in, in hearing about today. Great, thank you. One other person. Anyone else? Don't be shy. No one? I just respond to that. There are, there are two very distinct camps. I've been a disciple of the Center for Creative Leadership, which actually does work across the world. And CCL is very much a proponent of understanding what your weaknesses are and working on them. This work, which was actually initiated by Tom Rath almost 50 years ago, is based on positive psychology, which is about what are your best talents and how can you best leverage them. The other aspect is leadership is a huge topic. In this presentation, I'm going to do my best to tie your talents to strategic aspects of leadership. And not just my thought of strategic leadership, but the slide that you see on the screen actually has a list of six key competencies for strategic leadership based on representatives from Harvard Business Review. So, not just my opinion, but also some opinions that probably carry some good weight. Anticipate, challenge, interpret. I think all of you could agree, at least I would agree, that anticipating, we always have to be thinking ahead. What is the next step? In fact, our keynotes this morning actually address that. Interpreting. The challenge with interpretation is three people can say that see the same incident and maybe interpret it three different ways. Strategic leaders, though, have that ability to understand a variety of sources of information, trying to find a way to tie those together. Challenging. Has there been a more challenging time in the world than the one we have right now? It was interesting. When I heard the keynote speak again this morning, I was thinking to myself, am I in India or am I really back in the States? Because we're talking about exactly the same things. Decisions, alignment, and learning. How can you not be a lifelong learner if you are not learning? And here I am, I'm in the country that is probably most synonymous with technology, and you know, we have people in front of the room talking about we're falling behind. I think people in America that I know that work in technology would scratch their heads and say, how can someone in India say they're falling behind in technology? This is a sky falling. Alignment. Especially with organizations now, and I look across the room, and I've actually had the chance to do work in several other countries. If you can't align resources, not only within your own country, but within a number of countries, you're not going to be successful in today's economy or to tomorrow's economy. Complexity, action, commitment, 
other resources, and again, that information comes from CCL. I've been fortunate, the author of that information is Kate Beatty. Kate was actually one of the first people I got to work with at CCL a number of years ago. So, another quick summary, another source of information on strategic leaders. Really nothing there that you probably haven't seen before. But if you're going to be a leader, it's about initiating change. It's about looking to the future. It's not about the status quo. Anyone have anything they'd care to add about strategic leader before we move on to understanding more about Strength Finder? Hearing none. How do people become more strategic or how do they become better leaders? You know, I won't be offended. I actually happen to be an adjunct professor at a university back in the States. You're not going to become a better leader by listening to me in the classroom. You're going to become a better leader by actually being in the workplace, being in situations, and the di different situations give you different skills, and actually experiencing, and also by failing. Failing is not given nearly enough credit in helping people develop. Also, when you have those experiences, you need to have someone that can be a sounding board, someone that can understand, someone that you can talk to, that can be a mentor, that can be a coach. Very important. Thirdly, if you're going to be effective, not only do you need to know others, you need to know yourself well. For the sake of time, I can't tell some of my favorite stories about self-development for myself, but I've had people in many cases tell me things that were very surprising. Usually they come from my wife. So fortunately, after 32 years, I must be listening to what she has to say. So, you've got to know yourself first. In doing that, you've got to identify your strengths. Now, we're going to talk about Gallup's tool, but there are many other ways to develop strengths or develop or understand really more about yourself. I've got a list of items on the board. So for example, if I were to ask you how many of you have taken the MBTI before, just raise your hand. So you would understand your preferences based on the MBTI. <coughs> And that would be one lens you might look through. Another one there is the disc. We were talking about the disc earlier. Again, another way to understand your perspective and your preferences. The TKI, Thomas Kilman Indicator. How many of you understand your conflict style? I use the TKI quite a bit, but again, my best mentor or my best coach is my wife. My wife tells me when conflict comes, I run away. So she knows if there's going to be an argument that I'm usually going to be the one that will fold my cards or fold my tent and go home. So I've learned a lot from my wife. Got a, no comments from the peanut section. I apologize for walking in front here. One video I want to show you. How many of you know who Bill Murray is? Very short video clip. Bill Murray, there's no telling what a man will do to win a woman's favor. And I think sometimes having poor self-awareness is a great example from this video. Let's see. <laughs> 